Dr. Moore is uh, of the view that at this point, we are able to now learn to, uh, to live with some continued cases of COVID. Unfortunately, it's not going away completely just yet, but we need to move on and continue with the, first of all, the opening of our economy, but also so that people can get back to a more normal way of life. So let's take you through the week. On Monday, Ontario hit its highest positivity rate since late January, a rate of almost 18%. On Tuesday, Dr. Peter Uni, chair of Ontario's COVID-19 science advisory table, stated we're in a sixth wave. On Wednesday, the province gave a subtle recognition of this, announcing they would continue to hand out free rapid tests to the general public at places like grocery stores and other settings like schools until at least July the 31st. Now, while Dr. Moore, the province's chief medical officer of health, hasn't said that we're in a sixth wave, he previously said indicators are expected to rise as Ontarians interact with one another and that Ontario has the tools it needs to manage the virus. So where does this leave us today? Joining us now to discuss Dr. Farhad Razak, doctor and epidemiologist with Ontario's COVID-19 science advisory table and Dr. Abdu Sharkarwi, infectious diseases specialist with the University Health Network. Uh, thank you both so much for joining us. Uh, Dr. Razak, I'm going to start with you. Quebec's Public Health Institute says they are in a sixth wave and they're urging Quebecers to reduce contacts. Does it concern you from a messaging perspective that we aren't hearing this from government officials here when your own science table has said we're in a sixth wave? Yeah, I'd, I'd like it to be said more clearly. We mm -hmm. are, we're clearly in a sixth wave. There's multiple indicators that have aligned very strongly to now dem to demonstrate that. So if you look at wastewater across the province, it's consistently up everywhere the amount of uh, the COVID virus we're detecting. Uh, the tests that are coming back positive are going up everywhere. And we can feel it in the health system. So I just came off uh, our ward at St. Michael's this morning after spending a week there. And over the last many, many weeks, we had zero or one admission for COVID. And suddenly we're starting to see more admissions come in. The numbers in the province indicate that. So there really is no indicator I can think of now that says anything other than we are in a sixth wave. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Razak, do you think that the government, if they're, if they're not going to say, you know, we're in a sixth wave or if they're, they're not going to make any movement on, on, you know, reversing the course with restrictions, do they need to say, you know, maybe in your best interest to reduce contacts? We're not bringing in a mask mandate or restrictions, but just keep that in mind. Would that be wise messaging? I'd like to see it said. I, I would say it to anyone who asked me. I'll say it to you tonight and to everyone who's listening. Wear a mask. Please wear a mask anytime you're in public. Uh, reduce your contacts wherever you can. Um, masks still allow you to do many of the things we care about in society. Kids can go to school, you can go shopping, malls can be open, but keep that mask on. Uh, and keep an eye on the numbers. And for all of the individuals out there who are not fully vaccinated to the extent that they can, there's no better time than today. There's no better time than tomorrow. Please go out and do it. So third doses, second doses, even fourth doses for those who are eligible. Please go out and get them. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Doctor. We're going to pivot here to Dr. Sharkawi. Uh, Dr. Sharkawi, Dr. Vera Edges, the Chief Medical Officer of Health for, or the Medical Officer of Health, I should say, for Ottawa and her counterparts in Peterborough and Durham Region are recommending masks stay on while cases rise. Is it best that masking remains a choice as opposed to a mandate right now? Well, quite frankly, in an ideal situation, you would like there to be choice to determine what is done so that everybody can be satisfied. Unfortunately, that just doesn't uh, bode well when it comes to the reality of a pandemic uh, where we have to be accountable to each other. And if we've made this an issue of personal choice, when we're now confronted with the most transmissible variant to date uh, during this entire pandemic, we're inviting trouble. Uh, I don't think it's wise to allow people to make this sort of decision on their own. When you think about school environments and you think of the social awkwardness and the peer pressure the children mm -hmm. will face, it's a very difficult situation to try and manage. And I think it would be much better to just hold on to the reins a little bit more tightly and have a firmer message from a public health standpoint to say, listen, we'd like to see this through. We want to mitigate the number of people who are going to get very sick, the number of people who are going to end up in hospital, what that is going to do to an already very stretched uh, healthcare workforce, and try and keep people safe a little bit longer until we get greater vaccine coverage and warmer weather to allow safer activities to occur. I think the way this has gone about so far is basically playing into the hands 
a fade a little bit too much. Mm -hmm. Do you think, Dr. Sharkawi, if I can ask you this, that the, the fact there's an election in two months weighs into this? Because when we look at Quebec, they have a public mask mandate for public places until about mid-April. They're saying this is a sixth wave. Their public health officials are saying this. They don't have an election until the autumn. Here in Ontario, we have an election in two months. We are not seeing public health officials come out and say this is a sixth wave. Dr. Moore has not been available for interviews. And the messaging is, you know, well, Christine Elliott, the health minister, says, I can't say, you know, entirely no, there will never be restrictions again. But that's not, we're staying the course and we're not moving to, toward a mask mandate again. And uh, right now there's, there's no indication we're going to have any kind of restrictions. Do you think, unfortunately, the, the fact there's, that there's an imminent election has uh, an impact on this? Well, there's no question that there has to be some form of political motivation for making the sweeping uh, set of decisions that were made. Um, you know, we've been wearing masks for two years, and to decide that we are going to now uh, toss them aside when we're dealing again with the most transmissible variant. I want to reiterate that. We're talking about a reproductive number of somewhere between 12 and 15. One person can effectively infect 12 to 15 other people. That's a whole hockey team. That's more than a whole family. That's a whole set of people that are having dinner together. And we've heard uh, tons of these stories uh, and anecdotes over the last two weeks of people in these exact same situations. And somebody ends up sick in hospital as a result of that. So, yeah, I think it's very difficult to say that there can't be any political motivation to this. I would say to the general public, let's put the politics aside. Be smart. Protect yourself. You don't need common sense and safety to be legislated for you. Uh, wear a mask. Encourage as many people as you can to wear masks for the time being until things settle down some more. Uh, and let's work through this together. Let's put the politics aside and try and be conscientious towards looking after each other. Okay, and doctors, I want to uh, thank you for that, Dr. Sharkawi. I want to ask you both about a fourth dose or a second booster. Uh, I'll start with you. Uh, Dr. Razak, Ontario is waiting for guidance from NACI on second boosters to the general public. We understand we're going to get an answer on that in early April, so quite soon. How necessary will a second booster be to protect you if you're a member of the general pu public? Uh, what I mean by that is you're not in a vulnerable group, you're not immunocompromised, you don't live in a long-term care home. Yeah, right now, the, for, for an otherwise completely healthy adult who has had three doses of the vaccine, the fourth dose will not give you an enormous amount of additional protection. And I think we really should be looking at the fourth dose as targeted to special groups of individual who are, individuals who are at higher risk. Uh, that said, there is still an enormous opportunity to improve our vaccination with the third dose for many, many adults across the province, across the country who are eligible. And there the evidence is 100% clear that that third dose gives you much more protection against the variant Omicron that's circulating now, both against symptomatic illness and to some extent for severe illness. And even the second dose has not really caught up for our uh, the younger parts of our population. So for kids, there's still a lot of opportunity to give a second dose. For healthy adults, there's a lot of opportunity for a third dose. The fourth dose will play some role among those who are the most susceptible. Mm -hmm. Because already here in the province, uh, it, the second booster is available to very specific groups. Uh, Dr. Shakari, I'll, I'll end with you. If this becomes widely available, well, one, do you anticipate NACI will recommend that it be widely available to the public here in this country and in, in Ontario, should you get one? I don't think it'll be widely available the same way it was recommended in the U.S., for example, for people over the age of 50. Mm -hmm. I agree with Dr. Razak. I think the data is fairly limited to those that are in the highest risk group. And I think we have to think pra pragmatically here uh, in terms of reducing transmission. We're thinking about adults that are under the age of 50, frankly, who have not even received their third dose. Th mm -hmm. Those are the uh, members of a demographic group that are going to be engaging in a lot more social activity and exposure risk will be higher for them, as well as for kids that are under the age of 11. Um, those are the groups that I think we really need to focus on from a macro point of view to reduce transmission in the community overall. So frankly, I, I think a targeted approach is still the reasonable one. I hope NACI endorses that soon for high, higher risk groups. And I think we need to focus on second and third doses in those younger patient groups that uh, we alluded to earlier. For mm -hmm.
Thank you both doctors for your medical analysis and advice and expertise. As always, we appreciate it tonight and always. Thank you both. Thank you.